Hi everyone, my name is Juan Manuel and I'm going to present the research work based on a convolutional neural network scheme for pediatric brain MRI super resolution. First of all, I will start with an introduction of the problem, then the materials used and the method applied, and after that, the results obtained followed by the final conclusions. MRI is a technique really important for diagnosing and treating pathologies in soft tissues, such as the brain, as it releases a non-ionizing radiation. However, it implies to have the patient for a long time in the scanner, provoking the movement of children and the related artifacts that appear on the images, so children need to be sedated. This is the main reason why the investigations of cerebral diseases are still at an early stage in this age population. Then, our major proposal is to reduce the time it takes to carry out the MRI exams. Firstly, we simulate the low resolution images to build our super resolution method based on convolutional neural networks, and then we evaluate our method with new images that were not used for training. Here, we have the pipeline of this work. On the left, there is the low resolution image, and with the aid of the super resolution method, we attempt to recover the original resolution that is shown on the right image. Regarding the data, we used two different datasets, both of them composed by T1 weighted MRI and acquired with a 3 Tesla scanner. The first one is open to public access in the Open Neurofield platform and it contains volumes from healthy adults and children. The second dataset was provided by our parent hospital, including 12 children diagnosed with dysplasia and two kinds of MRI sequences. Here we have the specifications for our computational equipment and also the software principal packages that were necessary for co-developing. It is important to highlight the graphics for NVIDIA that help us to decrease a lot the computational cost of the training phase. Our convolutional neural network was implemented with TensorFlow 2.0 library from Python environment. Regarding the method, we simulate the lower resolution images by first unsampling and smoothing the original high resolution images. This process is repeated for three different scaling factors and the lower resolution images are interpolated before getting into the network so that we use the same architecture for all the scaling factors. The healthy dataset is used to train the model in two stages. At first, we use the adult volumes as a first step of training, and then we apply transfer learning to children's subjects. It was also necessary to feed the network with patches instead of complete volumes because of the limitations of NVIDIA graphics. Our CNN takes as a basis the unit autoencoder structure and adds the residual operations to avoid the gradient vanishing and a final segment layer to bound the intensity values between 0 and 1. The results are presented first in a quantitative way, with violin plots regarding the scaling factor and the method, that could be the classical interpolation or the CNN in two or three dimensions. First row of figures here refers to the results on the first dataset, including the trusted learning comparison. And the second row of figures means the results of testing on the dysplastic children. We employed three metrics, first one, peak signal to noise ratio, which is the most discriminant one, and also the mean absolute error, and the Sturzgrad similarity index. We can assure the statistical significance effect of our experiments due to ANOVA and Wilkoson tests that were performed. Now we show the visual results for a five-year-old healthy child. Having a look at the detailed figure on the right, the qualitative inspection is in agreement with previous violin plots, and we can see how our CNN methods improve the lower resolution and interpolated images in all scaling factors, but we're seeing the results when the size of lower resolution images decreases. Then the smoothing effect disappears and the contours are successfully recovered, so it is not challenging for a clinician to differentiate the cerebral tissues that are present. These are two examples of image results for children dysplastic cases where red arrows are here pointing the, to the lesion, to a dysplastic lesion. 
The dysplasia case on the left is difficult to detect due to the small size of the lesion, but we get to recover it for all scaling factors. And it also presents less noise than the original high resolution image. Then on the right figure, we are not able to recover the dysplasia with the lowest scaling factor because of the MRI type of sequence, but the quality improves using greater scaling factors, as we see here. Our expert radiologist uh, performed two different tests, which are first the five point Liger scale, and then a binary answer to decide if the lesion can be diagnosed from our resultant images. With those answers, we aim to assess the detection of dysplasia lesions from the super resolution images. In the table shown, both tests are provided for the MRI sequences separately and together, showing better results with temporary edge sequence as it was the sequence used for CNN training. We finally obtained several conclusions from this work. First, our results that are similar or even better compared with the current state of the art, showing that we will be able to decrease the MRI time for our examinations, and it was our fundamental purpose from the beginning, so we achieved it. We could recover small dysplasia lesions thanks to the super resolution method that was implemented. And as a future work, we will try to train our network with low resolution images acquired directly on the scanner. It will be great also to compare our CNN method with novel implementations uh, such as the GANs or the transformers. And finally, all of this work could be the starting point to develop a pre-sedation MRI protocol among the children population.